The philosopher George Santayana famously observed, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. The value of history is found in the stories and experiences of the past. These accounts give steel to the backbone. They inspire faith and confidence in Yahweh, as that which he has done for others, he will do for you. Yahweh also understands important lessons are to be learned from the records of the past. The final generation will face trials unknown to previous generations, to prepare the righteous for Earth's final events, Yahweh has provided a resource that links the past with the future. This resource is found in a book, unique from all history books in the world. This book, The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan, contains a wealth of spiritual, historical, and prophetic knowledge, second only to the Bible. It lays bare the forgotten facts of history to warn of an end-time repeat of the horrible persecutions of the past. More than a history book, The Great Controversy is also a religious book which reveals all important theological truths to the final generation. Prophetess Ellen G. White a founding member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, while in vision, wrote that which she saw of future events in the prophetic book, The Great Controversy. The veil which covers today's future is drawn aside, and the events of great significance to every living soul are revealed in the pages of this precious book. The people of Yah must now learn the lessons history has to teach us, for what has been will be again. Mrs. White explains in the foreword to this great book, As the Spirit of God has opened to my mind the great truths of His Word and the scenes of the past and the future, I have been bidden to make known to others that which has thus been revealed, to trace the history of the controversy and past ages, and especially so to present it as to shed a light on the fast approaching struggle of the future. In pursuance of this purpose, I have endeavored to select and group together events in the history of the church in such a manner as to trace the unfolding of the great testing truths that at different periods have been given to the world, that have excited the wrath of Satan and the enmity of a world-loving church, and that have been maintained by the witness of those who love not their lives unto the death. In these records, we may see a foreshadowing of the conflict before us. Regarding them in the light of God's Word and by the illumination of His Spirit, we may see unveiled the devices of the wicked one and the dangers which they must shun who would be found without fault before the Lord at His coming. This book has long been the target of those who desire to keep the truths it contains from the masses. The Roman Catholic Church in particular has long sought to suppress this book as it exposes the pride, error, and atrocities of Papal Rome as do few others. Truth will always triumph. The Great Controversy has been translated into over 100 languages with tens of millions distributed around the world. Such widespread distribution has made it impossible to obscure the truth. Therefore, the Papal See chose a new approach. As destruction of SDA books would not work, 
Catholics decided to change people's beliefs regarding the Papal Church. During the 19th century, all Protestant churches were spiritually leery of Roman Catholicism and warned their congregants of the dangers of Catholic dogma and policy. The Seventh-day Adventist Church was aware of the dangers of Catholicism and warned all to flee its errors. Self-sacrificing efforts were made to distribute the great controversy in even greater numbers worldwide. In order to silence anti-Catholic warnings, Rome infiltrated the various Protestant organizations which allowed Roman Catholicism to change Protestant theology from the inside. The first hint this was underway within the Seventh-day Adventist Church revealed changes in attitude toward licensing and accreditation in Adventist schools and hospitals. Soon after came changes in theology to avoid being labeled a cult. Compromise with worldly custom was followed, slowly, by compromise with Catholic doctrine. Today, all of the Protestant churches in America have been infiltrated and compromised. Seventh-day Adventist leaders no longer warn against the encroaching danger of Catholicism. Rather, they seek to distance the Adventist Church from its historic anti-Catholic stance. In 1974, the United States sued the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists over alleged violation of the Equal Employment Opportunity Act. Neil C. Wilson, then Vice President of the General Conference, made a startling statement to the court. His statement reveals just how far the SDA Church has fallen and how much her beliefs have changed. Although it is true that there was a period in the life of the Seventh-day Adventist Church when the denomination took a distinctly anti-Roman Catholic viewpoint and the term hierarchy was used in a pejorative sense to refer to the papal form of church governance, that attitude on the church's part was nothing more than a manifestation of widespread anti-popery among the conservative Protestant denominations in the early part of this century and the latter part of the last, and which has now been consigned to the historical trash heap so far as the Seventh-day Adventist Church is concerned. Neil Wilson would go on to become the world leader of the Adventist Church. During his 11 years as General Conference President, he initiated and supported changes in attitude and policy toward Roman Catholicism. As the SDA Church had been successfully infiltrated, Adventist leaders either downplayed or denied historic Adventist doctrines. Their next step was to modify denominational publications to reflect the new theology. This is currently happening within Adventism. Ted Wilson the son of Neil Wilson, is the current General Conference President. Upon his election as world leader of the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, Wilson pledged to widely distribute the Great Controversy. First called the Great Controversy Project, Ted Wilson launched this campaign by mailing 22,000 books to all surrounding postal addresses neighboring the General Conference offices. Later, the Great Controversy Project had been expanded and President Ted Wilson pledged to distribute over 100 million copies of the book The Great Controversy worldwide. 
That which had begun as a campaign to spread heaven's truths everywhere has deteriorated into a wide attempt to cover up vital end-time truth. Fresh from the hands of denominational censors, the book now being widely distributed bears little resemblance to the original. The original contains 42 chapters with nearly 700 pages of vitally important information. The new and abridged book, retitled The Great Hope, has 11 chapters with less than 100 pages. The great spiritual impact of the work has been cast off. Many important truths contained in the original have been entirely left out. Missing from this new version are all the distinctive testing truth messages for this time. The Great Hope lists as its author E.G. White, but does not include the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary message, the second angel's call to come out of Babylon, the third angel's message exposing Sunday as the mark of the beast, 1844 as the hour of Yahweh's judgment, part of the first angel's message, the investigative judgment, part of the first angel's message, the identification of who and what is Babylon, the harlot woman and her daughters, the identification of the beast of Revelation 13 and Revelation 17, the little horn who persecuted the true church from 538 to 1798 and will be the chief instigator in these last days. Luther with all the reformers and their trials and persecution, which will be repeated. The rise of the Advent Awakening of the 1840s, culminating in formation of the remnant church and the seed of the woman who keep the commandments of Yah and have the testimony of Yahushua. This is a work set against the truth. All evidence which links the papacy of Rome to the beast of Revelation has been removed. It is a diluted version of the original. The great controversy in its original form was once a depository of great truth. Now, with all of the distinct doctrines removed, it is acceptable to the papal beast power. This is clear evidence of a yielding to Jesuitism by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. From the first, Jesuits have not hesitated to assume whatever guise necessary to destroy Protestantism and promote Catholicism. There, the Jesuits' object was the complete destruction of Protestantism and extermination of all Protestants as being the most formidable opponents to their dominion. In Protestant countries, where they had little influence, their plan was to adopt disguises, especially that of Protestant ministers, in order gradually to pervert the religion of the people and as far as possible direct the policy of the state. It is important to understand not all who further Jesuit goals are frocked priests. All one needs do is cooperate in furthering Jesuit agendas and he becomes a tool in the hands of the Jesuits who have influenced governments, infiltrated churches, and shaped the thinking of multitudes through their control of education since the 16th century. It would appear Ted Wilson, with his Great Hope Abomination, is working in close cooperation with the Jesuits, just like his father before him. The Seventh-day Adventist Church was entrusted with the truths of the Great Controversy. 
They have failed this holy trust. They have forfeited Yahweh's charge and now do the very bidding of Satan himself. The team at World's Last Chance invites you to learn lessons from the past that will aid you in the struggle ahead. To receive your free copy of this all-important book, contact us at www.worldslastchance.com. The great controversy is heaven's gift to the final generation. Prepare for Earth's final events. Learn today what the future has in store.